Reef then lads and lasses, how we doing and welcome back to the channel. As we know, the news surrounding Dan Ashworth and Manchester United has pretty much been everywhere over the last week or so. And firstly, I just want to say, how bizarre is it that a sporting director is getting this much coverage and this much attention? I've never seen anything like it in my entire life. But speaking about news, speaking about media coverage and Manchester United, as we do know, there is a new majority shareholder over there at Man United. And his name is Sir Jim Ratcliffe. Now, in his first interview surrounding Manchester United, of course, he's already had something to say on the Dan Ashworth situation. Now, first of all, speaking about Dan Ashworth, he can do that all he wants, but in the specific comments that he has made, he's thrown shade on Newcastle United. And personally, Ali coming across as a very well-respected lad. I love giving credit to every single team that we play against. I love credit in other teams' performances. It's just fair to say you don't like sort of effing and blinding it to certain teams. But the comments he's made in here have really, really annoyed me. They're very hypocritical. And I've got a very good point to make what Sir Jim Ratcliffe has said there absolutely embarrassing. He's come across as very arrogant and entitled. It's pretty fair to say he's going to fit right in at Manchester United. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. Honestly, this news surrounding the Wolf has been absolutely blown up, ladies and gentlemen, and I can't wait to talk into what Sir Jim Ratcliffe has said, because I don't agree with it whatsoever. So if you do enjoy this video, and you agree with what I say, hit the like button, subscribe if you are new around here, for all new Castle United content, and of course, put in the comments, if you are bothered about Dan Ashworth going to Manchester United, you let me know your thoughts on that. But what Sir Jim Ratcliffe has had to say about Dan Ashworth, or not even just about Dan Ashworth, what he's had to say about Newcastle United, throwing digs at our owners, throwing shade at our football club, I'm not having this whatsoever. And really, I've got a really good point going into this as well. So he was asked on the Dan Ashworth situation. As we know, of course, they do want Dan Ashworth working at Manchester United. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that, which we'll get on to yet again later in the video. But he's had to say when he was asked about the Dan Ashworth saga, if you like to call it, this is what he's had to say word for word. It's a bit silly. Personally, I wouldn't get dragged into that. And after he's saying he won't get dragged into that, he's went on to make further comments a bit idiotic already. What I do think is that it's completely absurd suggesting a man who was really good at his job to sit in his garden for a year and a half. He's also said at the bottom, it's absurd and it's stupid. Sir Jim, look, you uh, obviously is an absolutely fantastic businessman. But you've come into, and I hate to say it, one of the biggest clubs in world football. Simple as that. I absolutely despise them because they are so egotistical as a club. But they are one of the biggest clubs in world football. They have so much power in the footballing industry. You've walked into that hot seat and you've been in that hot seat for a mere 72 hours as of the time of recording. It might be a bit longer while you're watching this video. But you need to realise the comments you're making when you're walking into one of the world's biggest footballing clubs. As much as we hate to say it, yet again, you've said there... It's pretty stupid to suggest that a man who was good at, it, good at his job to be sitting in his garden for one and a half years. So basically, if you're good at your job, you shouldn't be sitting around doing nothing. You do realise you are now a majority shareholder in Manchester United. Your club is the one who employed one of the, and still is right now, one of the brightest talents in the world, Jadon Sancho. He moved to Manchester United for £80 million, was it? He's been sitting on the sideline for months. Yes, there was a, a disagreement with your manager, Eric Ten Hag, right now. But you've had one of the hottest prospects in the world who has so much talent, who has so much to prove at Man United. You paid an absurd amount of money for him and you've got him sitting out on the sidelines and he's very good at his job. And also when the transfer window opened, you didn't want the best for Jaden. Yes, he sent him back on loan to Borussia Dortmund, which was the easy option. That's where he's already been. You didn't get him out on day one. You didn't put him down with the under-21s to go and play football. Eric Ten Hag done the worst way possible. Yes, he had a disagreement with the manager, but the manager, in that sort of situation, you can't, I think it was something like he banned him from using the same canteen. He didn't, he wasn't allowed to use the same dressing room. It, it, that was embarrassing for, from Eric Ten Hag in a different situation. But to suggest that, you think it's absurd for a man to be not doing anything for a year and a half. You employ Jadon Sancho, who's been pushed out of the sidelines. And not only that, as we do know it, in the 2022 season when we wanted Jesse Lingard on loan, who just come off the back of a very absolutely fantastic spell at uh, West Ham United, as we do know, your club was the one who offered Jesse Lingard to us, I think it was for £4 million for six months, which in itself is absolutely absurd. But not only that, if we manage to stay up, actually, I think I am wrong. I think it was in the 2021 season. If we managed to stay up, you wanted an extra £12.5 million. Of course, you didn't want that personally, but Manchester United wanted that. And you're now a majority shareholder of Manchester United. You need to think about these things when you are coming into a football club with as much power as is that. Yet again, we wanted Jesse Lingard and you would not let us have Jesse Lingard. And yet again, he was sat on the sidelines for, for years and years on end. 
In that, in that year of 2022, he made 10 appearances for Manchester United. That's yet another sort of example of a player at your club sitting out on the sidelines. So I just want to say, don't be so hypocritical. You need to think about these things yet again. This lad is, is fitting in right in Manchester United. Their fans are so hypocritical. They've not got no constructive argument whatsoever. They just think, we're Man United, blah, blah, blah. Get him in. Absolutely not. If you want Dan Ashworth, you pay for Dan Ashworth. You can't just walk over and say, right, we want him. Let's have him. It, it's not like that whatsoever. We wanted Dan Ashworth at Brighton. Look, we either paid for, uh, paid for him at Brighton or we waited for his sort of contract to run out. That's what you have to do. You either have to wait 20 months for when Dan Ashworth's um, sort of contract is up. It's not up exactly two years. It is 20 months confirmed by Luke Edwards of the Telegraph Football. You'll either have to wait that or pay up. It's as simple as that. You cannot get him now. He is under Newcastle United's books. He's getting paid weekly by Newcastle United. It's room at around 25 grand a week, which isn't going to harm us whatsoever. We've got the likes of Jeff Hendrick, who isn't even included in a championship squad. Yes, like a 25, 32 man squad. Uh, it's not going to harm us whatsoever paying him wages. But if you want him right now, it's simple as that. You pay, and if you don't pay, You'll wait until 2026, and we are going to get a sporting director, which I think is fantastic for Newcastle United. This is the statement that they did leave uh, on Dan Ashworth's departure. They said, of course, Darren Neal's the CEO of Newcastle United, did give this statement. He said, we are naturally disappointed that Dan Ashworth has chosen to leave Newcastle United. However, our exciting journey doesn't stop there, and the process to recruit a new sporting director uh, begins immediately. We thank Dan Ashworth, blah, 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 blah. Now, that is exactly what I want to hear from my club. We need someone who is going to better what Dan Ashworth does. And actually, away from that, I think we need to look at someone who is going to work around Eddie Howe as a whole. Because Eddie Howe, he likes to be a little bit of a control freak. He wants his sort of hands in the, the scouting. He wants his hands in the, the tactics, the results on the pitch. Like I said, he isn't just a manager who gets results on the pitch. He wants to be the man in absolutely everything. So probably for the better, Dan Ashworth, I've seen some fans say he's absolutely crap. we best signings have come before him, look. I'm, I'm, I'm not that arrogant. It's, it's fair to say Dan Ashworth is absolutely one of the best in his job. Yes, he's been here, there and everywhere, which isn't a very good reputation. But it is fair to say he is definitely good at his job. Look, we can't hide the fact of that. The youth he's bringing, like Alfie Harrison, for example, Trayvon Sanusi, Leo Shahar in the youth teams. And yet again, the sidings like Tino Livermento, one of the best up and coming fullbacks in world football that there is. Left back, right back. He's versatility, the way to stand up a man. He's physicality for a 21-year-old lad. is absolutely superb. Anthony Gordon, one of the best performing wingers in the world this season, goals and assists to his game. He's absolutely fanatic pace. The, the energy that he brings in his work rate is unbelievable. He has signed them players. So look, he is going to be a big miss. But we need someone who, yet again, can work around Eddie Howe and can better than Ashworth. Now, more comments, actually, which I thought... As we do know, Simon Jordan from TalkSport, he's not always got the best to say about Newcastle United. But he had something to say on the Dan Ashworth and Manchester United and Newcastle United situation. Yet again, he doesn't have the best to say on Newcastle United. But he said something here, which I exactly sort of, is the word, empathise with? Emphasise with? I don't know exactly what it is. But he said something here, which I basically exactly agree with. Simon Jordan speaking on the Dan Ashworth saga yet again. Would I hold out for my 20 million, which is the sort of rumoured fee, if Manchester United want to buy Dan Ashworth? Damn right I would. Damn straight I would. I'd make them pay every last cent that I could possibly rinse out with them because they don't get to take my vision. It's absolutely as straight as that. Do Man United come into this equation and just say, we're Manchester United, where you want Dan Ashworth? Absolutely not. Who on earth do you think, look, Man United, you're a fantastic club. As much as I hate you, you are a fantastic club. You've had some of the best footballers England's ever produced. David Beckham, um, Roy Keane, I know he's, he's not from England, but you know what I mean, I can't know. I should have just said the best footballers that football has produced. You've had some unbelievable footballers. Wayne Rooney, Ryan Giggs, the, the whole lot of it. But now you aren't the Manchester United that you once were. And you've got to accept that fact. You have got to accept you are not the Man United that you once were. You cannot walk into this deal while a person is on our books and get him straight away from us. It's absolutely not as simple as that. He's under contract at Newcastle United. So you're either going to have to wait all that's up. And Dan Ashworth moves to you for free. Or you're going to have to pay £20 million. As you, as we, it's pretty clear. No, you want your man now. So pay up. £20 million. The biggest team in England. Which I can agree you probably are. If you want your man. You're going to have to pay for him. Simple as that. But that is the end of the video, ladies and gentlemen. If you did enjoy the video, yet again, like I've already said, like the video if you did enjoy it. Let me know in the comments what I did say before. Would you be bothered if Dan Ashworth went to Manchester United? And of course, subscribe if you haven't already. 
honestly, I, I just want to say, ladies and gentlemen, I don't really like to come across a lad who gets angry because I love to come across as a humble lad who respects every single team, as I do the likes of with all due respect yet again. Bournemouth and Luton, who've done fantastic against us this season. Man United fans, for example, would look at them and say, ah, you're a small club, blah, blah, blah. Who on earth do you think you are? Absolutely not. They've, they've gained their right to be in the Premier League. They're playing fantastic football at the minute. Do you know what I mean? I love giving credit with every single team and I don't want to be this sort of person because so many people who make videos are content creators right now or just, they just shout at a camera and get so much views. I don't want to be that. I want to be here to speak the truth about football and uh, yet again, when someone like that has thrown digs at my club and thrown shade at my club, who's been in the hot seat, if you like to call it, for me are three days as of, as of the time of recording. Who on earth do you think you are? I hope for the fourth time in a row this season, when we go to Old Trafford, we absolutely Look, I don't swear, ladies and gentlemen, so, so turn it off for a second if, if you don't like swearing. But I hope we absolutely take the piss out of them at Old Trafford for the fourth time in a row. We're just going to end the video on one note, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Go and enjoy your day. Glory, glory days are over.